How you doing, John? Good to see you. Thank you. Good to see you. I like the shirt. Thanks. What do you know about Aaron Jeffrey? What makes him a good stylistic matchup for yourself? Um, you know, I think he's one of those guys that's really good everywhere. People, you know, still try to relate people as being one dimensional and stuff like that. And obviously he's got great Muay Thai and I think that's probably more of his background, but he's a brown belt in Jiu Jitsu, good wrestler. So yeah, there's not going to be an easy spot with him, but I think I'm just uh, a little more solid in some areas that'll uh, give him some trouble. This guy kind of came out of nowhere. It's probably not someone that was on your radar for the last year or two. Is this a matchup that really excites you when they sent the contract? You were excited to take this guy on? Yeah, you know, I'm at a point where I'm only fighting top tier guys. So I knew one of those guys was coming. And, um, you know, I, I kind of thought the Vanderford fight might be something that was uh, on the horizon. And then when he came and uh, knocked Vanderford out in the first round, it's obviously a guy that looks exciting, looks like somebody you want to test yourself with. And, um, and you know, he's a young up and comer. So, I know I've been in that spot trying to get fights with tough guys, and a lot of times the guys won't take it. So, um, yeah, as soon as they said his name, I said yes. I was, I was uh, pumped to make it happen, and I think it'll be a good fight. So you're currently on a two-fight skid, skid, but albeit against two of the best fighters in the world. Have you made any changes to your training camp or your regimen uh, as you look to get back into the win column? Um, you know, a, a little bit of changes, nothing major. Um, just kind of tweaking some things, you know. Um, I think, uh, you know, with Masasi, I uh, was not fully aware of, of what he was going to be offering. Um, so, you know, I think that's something that I've had to make a little bit of a, a change on. And then, um, you know, our uh, injury early on in the fight against Evelyn just put me in a spot with a guy like that. I really, not much I could do except survive, you know. So, um, I think that, uh, yeah, I'm still who I was. I'm going to be doing the same thing I've always done. And uh, just trying to get better everywhere. Yeah, no problem. John, you're very experienced. You certainly bring that into this fight. But the bookies are giving uh, giving uh, your opponent Aaron Jeffrey a four to one favorite. I thought that would that surprised me. Is it surprising you how much you're being sort of underrated in this matchup? Um, yeah, I don't ever look at that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, it seems absurd. But you know, that's what it is. People in my last fight, I had a really uh, I think poor showing. As far as after the first round, I didn't go forward any. So I think a lot of people saw that as oh, I'm not, not who I used to be or something like that. Um, I got hurt pretty early in that fight. And then it was just a matter of I don't want to get, get put away. So, you know, I can't be real aggressive. And I think that's, uh, I think that made a little, I mean, even my dad afterwards was like, I don't think you need to do this anymore until I told him, you know, that what well, happened. And he's like, oh, okay, well, then never mind. That's, that's not who you were. Um, so I think people look at that and see me as, thinking that a year ago I wasn't the fighter that I have been in the past, you know? Are you who you used to be? I think so. I hope all my training partners say that. Um, you know, I, I still, I don't, I haven't changed up my regimen. I don't train less. Uh, you know, this is actually probably the, one of the healthiest camps I've come through. Um, so I think, uh, I think I'm uh, as good, if not better than I've ever been. I, I hope I'm better. I've had a year to work on it and get better. On Monday, I got to talk to Dalton Hercules Rasta. Dalton Rasta's looking at that nice ranking you've got next to your name. He says he wants to fight you next if you get a win here. What's your response? That's a real classy fella. Um, no, I, uh, man, we, we actually, I got offered him uh, this summer and I, uh, I hurt my back and all I could do was kickbox. I couldn't really um, wrestle or anything like that. And uh, I wanted to take that fight really badly. Um, and my manager and my coach had told me, no, you know, that I wasn't, I wasn't at a point that I could fight somebody. So, uh, that's obviously one that we've been matched up before. So I would expect that to be coming for sure. Yep. No problem. Hey, John, uh, what was it like working with uh, former UFC light heavyweight champion, Chris Weidman for this camp? Um, great. Uh, I, man, he, uh, I, when I was getting ready to fight Masasi, he was supposed to be coming back from, uh, his fight and he was like, I'm going to get right back in the gym and help you and everything. And, uh, always a great training partner. And then he broke his shin. Um, and, uh, so that sucks. Uh, you know, it didn't happen for a while, but he, even when he was hurt, he was in there, how much he could help. He's just a, a really good guy and a good teammate. And then to have him in there for this one a lot, um, you know, it's hard to get guys with that kind of, uh, feel and pressure. I've only got a handful of guys that I train with that can feel that way. So adding somebody like him, it, it's, it's, Big of a blessing as you can get. Yeah, last question. Um, so for me, uh, martial arts, uh, 
it gave me the discipline to join the military and uh, get a uh, college uh, degree. What what stuff outside of fighting has fighting benefited for you? Um, you know, I, I think it's been it's been a life changer. You know, I, I wrestled my whole life. I got out of college. And it was one of those things. I'm going to go to grad school and I'm going to fight while I'm in grad school. And then, uh, you know, I got to grow up and do something else. So, so the big thing is I don't have to grow up, you know. Um, now I've got my own business from it, you know. Um, and it, it's just been such a big blessing. And, and I've set myself up to where when that time comes that I am done, I've got a way to make a living and uh, support my family. So it's been huge. Take a couple more here, Zach. John, as you haven't been out for a while, what have you done in that time to help improve your game? Um, you know, like I said, I, I hurt my back and really not doing anything. I had a really hard training day that everything went well, and I was mopping at the end of practice, and my back just started tightening up. Um, so it put me in a spot where I couldn't really wrestle. I could do a little bit of jiu-jitsu, but nothing great, but I was able to, to kickbox. So it really gave me a lot of time just to work on kickboxing. Um, and which is, you know, I, while I think I should have been doing Muay Thai for 16 years now, but to really focus on that for that amount of time that I was dealing with that. And it was a prolonged uh, problem. And I don't want to use the term injury because I was able to train around it. I was able to live my life around it. But it just really limited me from doing the things that I would normally do to train. So it just forced me, even in sparring, I was able to spar, but I'm not able to take anybody down. So I'm just focusing on uh, striking. And I think that really helped me a lot. Um, you know, anytime you train around an injury, you improve the things that uh, you normally wouldn't work on. So I think that's what happened there. Marty? Marty? Last one, Patrick. Hi. Hey, I'm just Pat McCoy from Combat Sports. Okay, how are you doing today? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. You know, it's been a while since you thought. I wanted to ask you, in the time off, I know you've been injured. Did you pick up any new hobbies? I know a lot of MMA fighters love Lego. I don't know if you have anything like that, but have you picked up anything new? Um, you know, I had all this time to uh, fish last year. I had my fishing partners here in the room with me, and we had the worst weather for like uh, the whole summer. <laughs> So, uh, sucked. I was injured. Couldn't do a whole lot, uh, of my work. Some of the workouts that I normally do and still couldn't fish. So that's one of my main things. My wife and I've got a mule. My wife has a horse. So we try to uh, do that whenever we get some free time, get out and ride. And I've got a two year old daughter and she absolutely thinks they're the greatest thing on the planet. So she rides with us. So that, that's another real fun thing that we do. And can we get a final prediction from you as well for this fight? Um, Gosh, um, high hopes that it's the first round finish and go home early. But I don't think uh, Aaron's the kind of guy I'm going to put away. I think he's going to be a guy that uh, with 10 seconds left in the fight is going to be coming at me hard. So I think it's just going to be a um, pretty hard fight for uh, three rounds. He's he's a finisher. I'm a finisher. So two guys doing that, we're going to stay in each other's face the whole time. We'll try Marty one more time. Hey, Joe. Um Word from Aaron earlier on, he seemed very confident going into this fight. Um, do you think he might be overlooking you somewhat? Um, I don't know. Maybe uh, I, I don't take him as a guy that would overlook me. That'd be great if uh, that's what he's doing. But I think he's just a confident guy that's trying to climb his way up the ranks and to come in and uh, put away you know, Austin Vanderford. I think that's going to give anybody a lot of confidence. Uh, but I think I bring a lot more to the table than Austin Vanderford does. Thank you. Call the best for Friday. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thanks, John. Appreciate the time. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you, John. You.